the last time you said uh, that you were more focused on things that are bigger than football. Obviously, the events with Breonna Taylor uh, coming down in Louisville today and the reaction across the country. I'm, I'm wondering how you consumed that and uh, and how you've been handling that today. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's unfortunate, honestly, um, but I can't say I'm surprised. I kind of knew when, when, when things take that long and they're trying to figure out all the process and they're doing all that stuff. Um, usually kind of can tell what the verdict is going to be. So I can't say I was surprised. Actually, when we met with the, the chief of police, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, that he had kind of hinted to us that um, that, that was going to happen. So we kind of, me and some of the guys that had met with them had already kind of knew what was going to happen. So like I said, I can't say I'm surprised. And as far as my comments going on, not really talking about football, I've kind of had to change of heart a little bit because I don't think me not talking about football is really going to change things. I think the best thing for me is just to take action in the community. So um, I'll take football questions, man. Well, uh, just if I could stay with that, though, if you don't mind, uh, what what actions have you taken since then, I guess? Or have you have you had time to put a plan together for something like that? I know there's been a lot going on. We didn't have too much time. I mean, the first thing I did after I had spoken to y'all is we immediately went down to, you know, the chief of police and we had met with kind of like the surrounding area uh, chief captains and we had set a just a great talk, you know, kind of, they kind of just stated their point of view on things. We just talked and, you know, had a real constructive conversation. Um, obviously we're doing things like, you know, Zoom with the Titan, you know, like I said, all along, I think affecting the youth and the, and the, and the future of this country is with our youth. So I think the biggest thing we can do is, you know, athletes and got people with platforms, is, you know, is talk to the, you know, the young kids that are going to lead the world one day. So, um, but yeah, like I said, I'm going to be working with the Titans closely and just looking to do things to get out in the community and help as much as possible. Thanks, man. Uh, Kayla. Hey, Kenny, I uh, hope you're doing well, man. Just shifting some focus to some game talk this week, getting ready to go up there to Minnesota. Um, what do you see out of their offense? I know that Kirk Cousins has struggled lately, but you've seen him in the past yeah. um, have success. Uh, what makes them a threat? Yeah, I mean, the first two games have been whatever, but I know, you know, Mike Zimmer, coach team, they're going to be ready to play. They're going to be, you know, it's going to be like walking to a hornet's nest when we go to Minnesota. Um, Kirk Cousins, he's played some good ball. He's a good quarterback. He's made a lot of plays in this league, um, you know, so – it's going to be a tough challenge. They got weapons, you know, with Thielen, their two tight ends, Rudolph, um, Irv Smith, you know, and obviously Dalvin Cook is one of the elite backs in this league. So they present a great challenge. Um, I'm, I'm excited for this opportunity. Uh, Joe? Hey, Kenny. Um, I, I guess when the day is over for you after a game, and I know winning is number one, but what, what, what are you satisfied with? What's a good day for you? Uh, when you watch film, what do you like to see and what kind of bothers you on day after games when you watch film if it doesn't go well? Um, honestly, um, just execution, effort, the details, all the things that, you know, Coach Vrabel kind of preaches. Um, when I, as I'm watching film, if I don't see those three things um, on tape, then I, and I'm not happy. And I'm one of those guys that try to, I try to be a perfectionist. So even if I make a good play, I think of – Think of ways to make a greater play. Like if I get a PBU, I, I, I probably could have got a pick. Or if I made a tackle, maybe I could have knocked him back instead of him gaining a yard or two. Um, maybe my communication needs to be better to my teammates. Just because I know something doesn't mean, you know, some of these younger players know, know something's coming. So the, just the way I can influence a game and impact the game bigger than myself, um, those are the things that, that kind of leave stress with me. But honestly, after this last game, I went straight to my son's, son's flag football game. I got in an Uber and went straight there, and I wasn't thinking about the game for too long. But then shortly after, I was already watching the film, trying to get it corrected. And, and just kind of following up on that, I mean, what, what's it like? Uh, how, how old? How old are your boys? Eight and five. And then I just what? had my newest son, um, Kari Onyx. He's a, uh, I guess two two. I don't know the exact day, how many days it's been, but September tenth he was born. Hey, what, what's it like for you to watch uh, sporting events at your kids? Or a part of, and how do you how do you handle your emotions? And I know I know it's fun at this age, but what's that like watching your kids in athletic competitions? Um, I mean, I just sit back and relax, and kind of let the you know the dads that are coaching the team let them do their thing. Um, I try to motivate my son, um, 
and kind of preach the same things that we preach here. I really don't care about, you know, he's so young. I don't really care about, oh, did you score a touchdown or did you grab every flag? It's more about the effort, you know, and building those, you know, those, those, those blue collar, you know, attributes that you want an athlete, like being a good teammate. Um, are you complaining? Are you begging for the ball? Um, are you playing hard? I mean, those are the only things I care about with my son. I was raised a lot different. My mom had me, it was all win, 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 win. Um, there was a lot of pressure on me from a very, very, very young age to, to excel at everything that, that everything that I did. And I just want to make sure with KV and Kendon and Kari that it's about fun, but at the same time as they grow older, just teaching them how to compete and be competitive in whatever you do. Because I think that translates to, you know, being a doctor or being a, you know, a janitor or being whatever in life you're going to be, um, having that drive and that mental fortitude to excel and succeed. Uh, Tron? Yeah, we, we've talked uh, before about how coming here has allowed you to be really utilized fully as a safety. That was something you loved about Dean Pease. Uh, yeah. Now that he's gone and then looking at this this last game, yeah. like I said, you, you were all over the place. How yeah. has that continued to evolve as far as allowing you to showcase your all-out ability as a safety? Yeah, I think, I mean, the coaches, obviously, they're, they're doing a great job of putting me in a position to make plays. You know, my teammates being around me, being having that continuity in the secondary and, you know, the linebackers and even the D-line, just, just knowing everybody, it's really helped me develop as a player. Um, it's been, you know, I just enjoy playing next to the guys, you know. Um, I have a high standard for myself. Like I said, um, when I go into a game, you know, my main goal is not letting my teammates down. So, I mean, I think that's the main thing that's, that's contributed to me making plays is it's just the guys around me in the locker room, you know, and the coaching staff. But like you said, it's been, it's been really nice just to, you know, get to play safety. <laughs> and then being used at times in the blitz game, I know mm -hmm. Logan, he, he did a really good job of timing it. That, that's why he was so effective. For you, yeah. what personally makes you an effective blitzer? Uh, I think a little bit of it's a timing. I think it's a it's an attitude, and then I work at it. You know, whether it's working my hands, understanding protections, um, knowing what the offense is trying to do, um, studying guys, how they block, do they lunge, do they, you know, are they do they sit back on their heels? I, I study all those tendencies. So for me, I mean, there's there's a plethora of things that go into each week of how I want to blitz. But this, I think the the, the thing that starts out. The thing you look at the most is just your speed coming off the ball. I think that sets up a lot of different things and timing. Because if you're late, um, a lot of times these quarterbacks are good in this league. The ball is going to be out their hands. So I just got to make sure that whenever I blitz, I'm going hard as I can because I'm not always blitzing. And as a DB, I understand that you, you don't want to be covering forever. So when I'm blitzing, I'm thinking about, you know, Malcolm. I'm thinking about KB. I'm thinking about Christian, Chris Jackson, J. Joe. I'm thinking about, man, I need to win and beat my guy. So my guys don't have to cover as long, you know, and maybe I'll be able to affect the ball and they'll be able to get a pick. Thank you. Uh, Chris Harris. Hey, Kenny, I was wondering, I know you said your kid, your oldest kids are eight and five, so they're obviously too young to have, you know, a serious social justice conversation. But even, even at that age, I'm just kind of curious as to what, what type of seeds of, of equality and positivity you're planting in them from the word go. I mean, I mean, my kids are mixed too. I mean, my, you know, my dad is Italian, white, and my mom's black. Um, so, I mean, their mom, you know, Kaylee, my, my wife, she's, she's Hispanic and white. So, I mean, so we come from all different backgrounds. So there's no ounce of racism, none of that in our blood because we, we're, we're, we're way, way, way too mixed to be, to even thinking that way. But no, um, honestly, what makes it easy for, for me is just having my kids in sports. You know, I don't have a, I have three boys that are, you know, in, in sports, nobody really cares about, you know, skin color, race or race or religion. It's all about, you know, playing for your teammates and, you know, ultimately that, that, that goal of winning together. So um, just keep, that's the main thing for me is obviously, yeah, I preach to them that, you know, treat others how you want to be treated um, and all those key, key values. But being in sports is, is probably the, the best thing in the best way to teach those lessons. And I wish everybody could experience it. Uh, John? 
Yeah, Kenny, uh, one one non football, one football for you uh, on the on the first um, the the Louisville situation. You know, obviously last month when you know after following the Jacob Blake shooting, you yeah. know, you guys canceled the practice. You had a lot of team discussions, and you know, there was a lot of frustration. I, I wonder if you're if you're getting some of that again today from teammates. You know, if there's any. Uh, you know, frustration level or, or team meeting scheduled in, in the same regard as, uh, as it was last month? I mean, I think guys have their frustrations. I don't think we're, you know, but I think honestly everybody's just tired and 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 it was expected. <laughs> like, like I said, nobody was surprised when the verdict came out. So, you know, obviously everyone has heavy hearts today. Everyone, you know, I, I pray for, you know, the city of Louisville and every, everybody in that community that's experiencing these hard times, but nah, as far as, as far as our team, like we've had our discussions, you know, we talk amongst ourselves, but I mean, nothing more needs to be said. I mean, globally, um, these, these problems need, need to stop and I'm praying they do. Sure. And on the, on the football front, uh, I know last week, some of the injuries resulted in a lot of inexperience at the corner spots. Um, I wonder how that affects you and, and Kevin at safety. You know, if you have to be more conscious of that when there's, you know, maybe one, two rookies or, or generally a lot of uh, inexperience at the corner positions. Um, I mean, the way I see it is, you know, one guy goes down as the next man up. It's an opportunity for a young guy to really go showcase his skills, get his opportunity to go make a play. Um, I don't worry about it. You know, Coach Midge, you know, Shane Bray, they do a great job of getting everybody ready. Um, and eventually, I remember being a young player, you got you got to play to get better. You got to you got to you got to play in the game. You you can't you can only emulate in practice what's happening in the game so much. Eventually, you just got to go out there and get experience. Um, for me, like I said, I like to impact players, not necessarily you know with my communication, um, helping those guys. And I do that on a regular basis, whether it's a veteran or a rookie. So not much changes for me. But yeah, I mean, when I, I get excited when a young guy gets his opportunity because I remember you know, seven, eight years ago, you know, being that young rookie in the locker room, um, wide-eyed, ready to go, um, and not wanting to let my teammates down. Thanks. We're going to run short on time, so I got time for two more. Uh, Teresa? Uh, just following up a little bit, Kenny, on, on those kids, uh, Chris Jackson and Christian Fulton, are you, what are you seeing from them out there on the field? I mean, they're just, you know, every day they're coming in, working hard, you know, working hard in the meeting room, being attentive, um, just trying to get better, honestly. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a weird year. Those guys didn't, you know, they didn't get OTAs. They didn't get rookie minicamp. They missed those valuable, valuable reps. So any expectations that people have, it, it, they need to be settled down a little bit because they didn't get all the, you know, they probably missed three, 400 reps of certain coverages or and things we're doing. So I'm just letting them guys learn at their own pace, you know, being a, being a big brother and being a leader, um, motivating them and trying to be in a positive impact on their game. Uh, last one, Tara. Uh, Kenny, uh, and back to the, the young guys again, I've heard lots of guys over the years say that, you know, when there's inexperienced guys out there that sometimes they themselves try to do too much to help them out. How do you kind of walk that fine line between helping them out and doing the job that you're assigned to do so that you don't get caught out of position? Um, like I said, um, first and foremost, I think every person on defense, I mean, the, the main thing we preach is doing your job. And, and as a guy that has experience in this league, um, I think being able to also do my job and communicate and help guys be better themselves is valuable too. Um, you don't want to sacrifice your game trying to tell everybody what to do. But at the same time, if you're willing and able and you're able to do it, I believe you should do it. And that's my stance on it. Maybe you're a guy that, you know, you can only focus on your job and that's all you got. Um, I think with me, my knowledge of the game, I'm, I'm able to, you know, help other people around me and not just myself. So whenever I can, whenever I can alert something, whenever I can be a helping hand on the field, um, I'll do that. And, and that only benefits the team. Um, that helps us win. So whenever I can do that, I'll do it. Glad I got one last one. Jim, real quick, uh, he's got to get going. Hey, Kenny, how important do you think it is for guys to kind of know the players before them? Uh, I guess if you came here from the Saints, 
did you study up on or know about the Eddie Georges, the Steve McNairs, the Blaine Bishops, the Keith Bullocks? And do you think that's important for young guys entering a new organization? Organization. I mean, I think it is. I mean, I love ball. I, I enjoy, you know, the, the the you know the football lives of you know all the great players. Um, watching that top 100 greatest players series. Um, I think it's. I think it. That's just part of being. That's just part of ball. Um, respecting those before you, um, but at the same time, you know, as a, as a, as a player, being your own person and molding yourself into whoever the player you want to be. But yeah, I definitely I knew about all those guys before I got here. But that's just my that's my love of the game. Some guys aren't the same. Some guys, you know, they they play football and they don't really they don't they don't know too much about the past. Um, I think it's important. I don't, I don't know. This is the game we play, the game we love, and knowing the history of the game is something that I've always that I've always enjoyed. I love going back, and I actually follow this NFL throwbacks on um, on Instagram. It's probably the, one of my favorite follows of just seeing s- some of the you know Hall of Famers or even guys that 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 were forgotten. They were really really great players. Um, it's 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 really fun to see. So.